Hi there, my name is Vic Veer. I'm the head of the sleep surgery department at the Royal National ENT Hospital in central London. What I want to do today is explain to you why often snoring therapies or treatments often have a sort of bad rep and seem to keep failing on people. What I want to explain is that these treatments aren't bad or they're, they're just not useful for anyone. They are good in certain people, but actually snoring is a lot more complex than people understand. An awful lot of the time people just go, oh no, no, I'm snoring, people are complaining, what I'll do is go into Amazon and pick up a product and hopefully it'll work for me. It's almost the wrong way around. What you should be doing is working out why you snore and understanding why you snore and then picking the right therapy for you. So to make it slightly easier to understand, what I've done is I've broken this up into three separate elements and I'll go through them one by one. The first point is that if you have a blocked nose, you're going to find it very hard not to snore. Even people who've never snored before, uh, who've got a, a sore throat or a blocked nose, something like that, and, and they can't breathe through their nose and end up breathing through their mouth at night, they tend to snore. It's not that they are a snorer, they just have a blocked nose and that's why they're snoring. So young women will snore, anyone will snore with a blocked nose. And when you unblock the nose, maybe a few days after when the cold or the flu has gone away, they start breathing normally again and they'd no longer snore. That's mainly because the airflow is not coming out through your nose, which is what it's meant to do. It's meant to come in and out through your nose at night rather than going through your mouth. If it's going through your mouth, you go past the uvula which tends to flap around in the wind and, and cause some snoring. So the first thing you ought to be doing is fixing your nose or, or helping yourself breathe through your nose because that will sort out the problem with the snoring in most cases at the very start if you're not a, a snorer by you know naturally a snorer. The problem is that a lot of people uh, have got a blocked nose but when they unblock their nose they're still snoring. So that leads me on to point two. So what I'll do is to illustrate these next few points, I'm going to put uh, some drawing up here so hopefully you'll understand what I'm talking about. But the next point is to remember that although I've just said that, oh yeah, unblocking your nose helps snoring, you have to remember that snoring never comes from your nose. It always comes from somewhere in your throat. And the reason for that is that snoring is caused by a vibration, it's something that flaps around. Now there are no areas in the back of your nose that can generate that sort of noise. Some people say, oh no, no, I can make my nose sort of flap around and I can do the same. If you look at my nose, I'll try and sort of zoom in. I can go, <coughs> you might see my nose sort of flapping around. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know if I can zoom in enough, but hopefully that will come up on the video. But the point is, the noise is not being generated. The vibration is not, this vibration here is not causing the sound generation. Actually, the generation has been caused from back here. To make any sort of noise, you need something to vibrate and that's how you generate noise. A bit like a, a plucking a guitar string or something like that. You see that vibration of the strings, that generates the noise. And the same thing happens to, in most cases, it's the palate, but you can cause snoring from the epiglottis, the lateral walls, all sorts of tonsils anywhere. But just, just for argument's sake, we're going to talk about the palate. If that's flapping, that's generating the vibration, which is generating the noise. When that happens, that vibration pushes a vibrating column of air through your nose. So it looks like it's vibrating here. And you even see my nose <laughs> sort of moving around like that. That's because the airflow is vibrating and then also vibrating my nose as well. And this is the same way we speak. Our, our vocal cords, we all know voice boxes down here. Our vocal cords are the two little things that sort of open and close like this. You go together like this. Ee. Let me explain that better. So you've got your lungs here like this and you've got the um, the windpipe coming up together and then you've got the trachea that comes up here and at the top of the trachea, so you've got this tube that comes up from your lungs and at the top of that tube is a cap, which is uh, what we call the voice box. And inside there, there's a little V that closes and opens like this. So if you want to make a high note, E, and a low note, it opens up and you take a deep breath in. When we speak, this comes together and, and the little tissue on the surface vibrates and that generates that sound. And so when we speak, we feel like the voice is coming up from here, from our lips or from our, the tip of our tongue. But actually the sound has been generated down here. It just feels like it's coming out here. A bit like the nose. It feels like, oh yeah, the snoring is just coming from the nose and if I pinch the nose, it goes away. All that sort of those theories, it's not true. It's coming from your throat and it's a vibrating column of air that comes out through your mouth or your nose. And that's what's generating the, the sound as it's such. So the last point is that people go, okay, all right, I get it. We have to unblock the nose and we have to do something to the palate. All the snoring will go, correct? It's not quite as simple as that either, I'm afraid. It's even more complex than that. So you have to remember that when you look at people's palates, you go, all oh, right, that must be the source because you know it's a little bit red and raw. But when you look at a lot of palates and you say, well, that palate looks a little bit lower or this one's a little bit more winged and we have all these little terminology, but all palates roughly look the same. There's no real reason why this person snores and that person snores. Their palate configuration isn't very different or dramatically different to say, oh yeah, you're definitely a snorer. All we have to do is return you back to a normal 
normal size palette or a normal looking palette. It doesn't work that way. A lot of palettes look the same. So why do some people snore and some people don't snore? It doesn't make any sense unless you think about it even further. So the third step is that you have to remember that although the palette is vibrating and therefore generating the noise, it's not actually the source of the snoring. And you're gonna to have to stay with me here. So what I'm trying to say is that it's not all about the vibration and the anatomical position of snoring. What we're talking about is the, the airflow through your throat. I'm talking about laminar flow. So you know that flow, when you see these amazingly sleek sports cars and in through a wind tunnel and the smoke is going right across it and there's just, it skims right over without any sort of disruption of that smoke. Uh, when you get turbulence is when it just fluffs around and goes all over the place and that slows down the car and they want the car to have laminar flow over it rather than turbulent flow over it. And it's that turbulence, when you get turbulence going past the palate where you start getting this sort of vibrating. But turbulence is really what this is all about. The reason why people snore, that the source of it, not the vibrating area, not the fact that your nose is blocked, the real problem is turbulence through your airway. So a really good example of this is that a surgeon like me has given you a spray for your nose to open up your nose so you can breathe through your nose. And then he's done a very clever operation on your palate so it becomes a bit stiffer. So instead of it doing this all night and flapping around, it stiffens up so you don't have such a, you don't snore so loudly and, and therefore the snoring comes down and everyone's happy. But those, a lot of those people, if you don't look at the snoring carefully, what happens is, although for a while it's not making much snoring because you've stiffened up the area, after a few months, sometimes a few years, people come back and say, look, I'm sorry, I'm still snoring. And the reason for that is that you haven't found the source of the turbulent airflow. A good example is, say, it may be that the tongue is sort of falling back like this. And that falling back, where your tongue goes falling back like that, that's why a lot of people snore more on their, on their back. When the tongue is falling back, and closes up the air at the back. The air, as it goes past behind the tongue into your nose, when the air is coming up through here, because it's so narrow, it becomes turbulent. It's a bit like um, having your hose pipe and just holding it like this and the airflow, or the water flow, should I say, just comes out in a sort of clear way. But when you put your thumb over it and make it go faster because you've narrowed it, it goes a lot further and you go like this, um, like white water. And that causes a turbulent flow rather than the laminar flow coming through. The same thing happens with air. Over here, there's a nice big airflow and there's it's laminar type flow over a sports car. But when you narrow it, you get like the hose pipe thing with your finger at the end of the hose pipe. It causes turbulence. That turbulent air goes up, causes a vibration of your palate, and then either goes through your mouth or comes through your nose, depending on what's blocked and what's not blocked. Hopefully that made a bit of sense. It's actually a lot more complex than that. And, and I don't pretend to have all the answers. Snoring is something that we're still working on. We're still trying to work out. But I, hopefully that will give you a sort of a framework to think to yourself, why am I getting snoring? How am I going to beat it? How am I going to fix it? And as I have more time, I'll give as many sort of a uh, bit of information about this as much as possible. I'm desperately trying to write my book at the moment. And that was one chapter in the book where I'm like, oh God, I haven't done that very well. So somehow me talking about it in front of you seems to help me write these chapters. It's a really bad way <laughs> of writing a book, but I, I'm not very good at obviously writing. But hopefully when I finish this book, it, this will all make a little bit more sense. And if it doesn't make sense in the book, I guess you could watch this video. Anyway, look, if uh, you want to have a bit more information, there is uh, some exercises you can do for snoring to tighten up the back of your throat so your tongue comes forward a little bit and the things don't flap around so much. These exercises are really useful. So if you want to look at that, there's a video just here. A lot of people worry about if they gain a bit of weight, uh, they have problems with sleep apnea and people say you should lose weight and then your sleep apnea goes away. Actually, weight gain and sleep apnea is a much more complex relationship. If you want to look at that video, it's down here somewhere. Anyway, thank you again for watching to the end. That's really kind of you. Take care. Bye-bye.